morning everyone. Welcome to our fellowship of worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in the Lord. Let's come to Him with thanksgiving. Let's enter His presence with all of our hearts singing praises and glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Tayo po ay umawit ng papuri sa ating Panginoon. Thousand times I failed, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again, I'm caught in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fate. My heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace. To love you from the inside out. remains the art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all fate in my heart and my soul I give you control, consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace, to love you from the inside out. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all fate And the cry of my heart is to bring you praise From the inside out of my soul, cries out give you control consume me from the inside out Lord let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never Cries out from the end. 
said in Philippians, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we, we come before you your throne. We have our requests and our prayers and our thanksgiving. First of all, Lord, we'd like to ask for forgiveness of any, for any sin in our hearts. Forgive our anxious thoughts. Forgive our anger. Forgive our doubts and our worries. We cast them before your throne at the feet of, of the cross. And we ask for forgiveness. May you cleanse us, Lord, so that these prayers will be heard and answered. Lord, we have just concluded a, a historical event in our country. We have exercised our rights and we have cast our votes. Right now, Lord, we present to you a request of prayer for our beloved country. Keeping in mind that our heavenly kingdom is not of this world, let the peace of God melt any fear, any anger, uncertainties that have resulted in the recent campaigns. It just reminds us, Lord, that this is a sinful, it's a dying, corrupt and imperfect world that we live in. We follow Christ and we are citizens of your kingdom. Maybe that is why we long for justice, we long for righteousness, we long for kindness and grace. Father, that also means that uh, you are our King. And only to you, Lord, we bow down. Sa iyo lang kami po aasa ng tunay na pagbabago. Only you can change hearts of rulers and kings, as we have proven in the past. You have even humbled the great and evil king Nebuchadnezzar, and he repented and gave praise to you at the end of his reign. May the promise of unity good governance and clean government be delivered to our people, especially the poorest of poor. But one power, Lord, we cannot access, and that is prayer. And we ask, Lord, that you cut off any plans of corruption and any abuse of power. Lord, as Daniel was delivered, even during his time of captivity, under four kings, we can also hope before you and on in you, the same God of Daniel, the same God of Esther, Moses, and Joseph, to deliver us, to protect us, and yes, to use us as conduits of spiritual and moral change. Help us to just keep doing what you have commanded us, Lord, to sow the seeds of the gospel and disciple men for the true kingdom. Lord, right now we would like to also pray for our church, the members who are in need of prayer. We pray first of all for the Aranas, grant them a safe and memorable trip, keep them and their company safe from any harm, Allow this family, Lord, to shine for you. We pray also for Nico de la Fuente. Lord, continue to heal this young man. May your peace, comfort, and healing be upon him. Give him courage and strength. 
and provisions for all he will need. Continue to pray for IV's full recovery, let her draw strength from you, Lord, and provide for their daily needs. We also remember that Iver and Reda, as they will have Matthew assessed again, uh, continue to give this couple, give them grace, love, and patience as they take care of their son and of one another. We pray for Tita Chilet's health. We pray for Doc Jim's continued recovery, provisions for Sister Becky and her family, and gabayan mo rin po yung mga kikos. Embrace the elderly of our church. Let their faith inspire the younger generations. Lord, we also ask for wisdom for Dinky as she takes care of her ailing mother. Provide also for her, Lord, and her family. We also ask for blessing sa upcoming water baptism namin, Lord. Uh, honor the obedience of our members who will publicly declare you as their Lord and Savior. And Lord, we need your wisdom as our church transitions slowly to meeting in person. Uh, please provide us, Lord, a venue, or the right venue, Lord, to do this, so we can meet face to face. We also ask, Lord, that you go ahead of our pastor, Lito and Tess, as they pursue, pursue a new ministry in the U.S. Provide for all that they will need. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this family, for using them, Lord to equip us and to encourage us. Gawin mo rin po silang uh, big ministers, Lord, of hope and uh, guidance, Lord, to the church that they, that they will minister to such a, sa U.S. Lord, continue to bless this Southern Light family, pati rin puro yung sa Santa Rosa. Help us to recover from the pandemic's effects on our health and our businesses. You have proven your faithfulness that we can look back to, Lord, na ikaw po ang sumaklolo sa amin. Sana po, uh, mas maging maalab po ang aming mga puso at determination, Lord, na ipamahagi ka sa na hindi pa nakakakilala sa iyo. At sa mga kapatirang dumaraan po sa matitinding pagsusunod. Father, all of these and other unspoken requests, we unburden to you. Lord, answer us according to your will, in your time, and in your ways. Habang po kami ay naghihintay, teach us to be hopeful and prayerful. Speak now, Lord, to our hearts as we listen to your message. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I cast my mind to Calvary Where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior, Lord, that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance seen by heavy stone, Messiah stand in all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name for.
dawn The sun of heaven rose again O oh, trampled death Where is your sting? The angels roll For Christ the King Oh praise the sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus serve the Lord's table. Uh, it is my prayer that every one of us, we are ready, we have uh, prepared our hearts and our mind as we remember what the Lord did for us on the cross of Calvary, even the night before He was crucified. Let me read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It says here, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine himself or themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. May the Lord add blessing to his word and uh, let's examine our hearts this morning. Let's check our hearts. Isa lang po sinasabi ni Apostle Pablo, he is not actually telling us not to uh, partake. Even if we have sins in our life, kahit na meron tayong ko, o mga ilang problema sa ating relationship with God and with others. But he wants us to examine our hearts. At kung sakaling meron tayong nakikita, ayusin po natin ito. At pagkatapos ay mag- maging bahagi tayo ng communion na ito. 
na tayo muna po ay malalangin. Panginoon Diyos, marami pong salamat sa inyong pong dugo at katawan na inyong pong sinakripisyo para sa amin. Lord, thank you indeed because through this blood and body that was uh, given to us, we have seen your grace and your mercy and your love for every one of us. Thank you, Lord, because through that, you have cleansed us from all forms of sin. Salamat, Panginoon, because now we know that we can go and uh, uh, partake in this communion and even be part of this wonderful uh, uh, thing that happened 2,000 years ago. Lord, I pray that you grant to us the forgiveness of our sins, yung mga daily sins po namin. Sinusuko po namin ito sa inyo. Hinihingi po namin ang tawad sa pangalan ng Panginoon Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Atin pong kainin ang tinapay. At atin pong inumin ang kutas ng ito. Lahat ay nagsabi na. Amen and amen. Good morning. How are you? Today is the first Sunday right after the national elections. So, did your bets win or not? I have a disclaimer in our study today. I thought about this particular topic of ours before the actual election. So, I didn't know yet who would win. And as I anticipated the aftermath of the elections, and since the Philippines is always divided after elections, then I realized for sure there will be people citizens who would not be okay with the potential winners. This is my rationale. If you are the ones who are fine with the upcoming officials, then you would be jubilant by now. Congratulations. You may not need much encouragement from me this morning, but if you are part of the citizenry who do not agree or approve of the election results, then for sure you'll want to seek answers or guidance from God's words. That is what I want to offer this morning. This is where I am coming from. I'd like to entitle our study today, How to Live as Fine Citizens Under a Flawed Government. How to Live as Fine Citizens Under a Flawed Government. Well, first we have to realize that every government is flawed. Whether uh, it's the president, the vice president, the mayor, vice mayor, governor. Every part of every leadership of our government is flawed because we are all flawed as human beings. So whether it's your bet who won or your bets didn't make it, we still live under a flawed government. So how to live as fine citizens under a flawed government? These are lessons on how we can survive and thrive under the terms of office of our new government leaders whom we do not identify with. Let's look at the Bible character once again, this time Daniel, and see how he lived a fine life under a, a flawed government. How he lived a fine life under a flawed government. In our previous studies, I've been talking about Israel's exile whether before they went to Babylon, as prophesied by Jeremiah, or after that, when some of the Jews started returning to Judah. This was the time of Esther and Mordecai, while they remained in Persia. Again, the reason the exile had to happen was because God had to judge the Israelites for their, for their sins. Ezra 5.12 says, But because our ancestors angered the God of heaven, he gave them into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, the Chaldean, king of Babylon. By the way, Chaldean and Babylon can be used interchangeably. Who destroyed this temple and deported the people to Babylon? Now, we will look at a sample of the Israelites at a time when they were still inside Babylon. Of course, uh, during the time of Mordecai and Esther, uh, they were still in a foreign land. Although at that time, Persia was already the uh, powerhouse, the world power. 
So when we look at the sample of the Israelites at the time when they were still inside Babylon, experiencing the discipline from the Lord. So how did they cope being under King Nebuchadnezzar in the Babylonian captivity? But first, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we could study your words. At this time that we have just finished the national elections, we pray, Father, that your words would indeed guide us as we live under a new government, under a new administration. And may you just give us wisdom as we look into, as we delve into your words today in Jesus' name. Amen. First, let us ask this question. Was there a way the Israelites could have avoided the appointed disaster that was bestowed upon them and the exile that they were to experience? Let's look at a couple of verses. Let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 7 and 8. It is the Lord speaking here. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warned repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. So the Lord will relent and not inflict the disaster if the people will repent. Jeremiah 36 verse 3. Perhaps when the people of Judah hear about every disaster I plan to inflict on them, they will each turn from their wicked ways, then I will forgive their wickedness and their sins. Perhaps. Perhaps. So... They had a chance to alter their destiny. Sadly, though, they did not repent. But they had a chance. Now, for us, uh, were there ways we could have avoided this, you know, not-so-ideal leaders? Probably, if as a nation or uh, we as believers are truly right with God. David Pawson, a well-known Bible teacher in UK, thought about the Israel's kings. And he said, God either gives us the leaders we need or the leaders we deserve. God either gives us the leaders we need or the leaders we deserve. It's like, you know, uh, Lord, uh, please alleviate us from this plight of ours. We have a very low, uh, our economy is down. Uh, people are experiencing hardships. Lord, would you give us someone that we need to rule over us, to lead us? God might give us that, or if we're not uh, faithful to the Lord, He might as well give us the leaders that we deserve. We will look at four steps on how to become fine citizens. Four steps how to become fine citizens. The first one is we should promote cooperation. We should promote cooperation. God actually himself gave this directive. In Jeremiah 21 verse 9, Whoever stays in this city, that is Jerusalem, after the attack of the Babylonians, so whoever stays in this city will, will die by the sword, famine, or plague. Walang ligtas, no? Walang ligtas yung Israelites. Even if they decided to stay in Jerusalem. But, Notice this, whoever goes out and surrenders to the Babylonians who are beseeching you will live. They will escape with their lives. Sounds ironic, right? Those who would stay will die. Those who will be exiled in Babylon will live. So God seems to be saying, just cooperate with my dealing for you in Babylon, though you will be under an unfriendly king. So to get a picture of whose regime Daniel had to cooperate with, we have to look at Nebuchadnezzar. Who exactly was King Nebuchadnezzar? I'd like us to look at the passage. Uh, this is not about uh, an attack uh, uh, at Israel, but a sample of how King Nebuchadnezzar attacked a nation. This is found in Ezekiel 26 from verses 7 to 12. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. From the north, I am going to bring against Tyre, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, king of kings. Yan yung title niya. He's the king of kings. With horses and chariots, with horsemen and a great army. 
He will ravage your settlements on the mainland with a sword. He will set up siege works against you. Build a ramp to your walls and raise his shields against you. He will direct the blows of his battering rams against your walls and demolish your towers with his weapons. His horses will be so many that they will cover you with dust. Your walls will tremble at the noise of the war horses, wagons, and chariots when he enters your gates as men enter a city whose walls have been broken through. The hooves of his horses will trample all your streets. He will kill your people with a sword, and your strong pillars will fall to the ground. They will plunder your wealth and loot your merchandise. They will break down your walls and demolish your fine houses and throw your stones, trim, timber, and rubble into the sea. Grabe si King Nebuchadnezzar. So, we will go to our passage this morning. Uh, Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. How did Daniel cooperate with that kind of a government, with that kind of a leader? Let me read Daniel 1, 1 to 7 for you. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand along with some of the articles from the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia and put in the treasure house of his God. Then the king ordered Asphenas, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. Let me jump to the last part of verse 5. They were to be trained for three years, and after that they were to enter the king's service. Verse 6. Among those who were chosen were, from, were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. Me. As we look at how Daniel promoted cooperation, let's look at where Daniel was mistreated but still cooperated with the government. So Daniel was mistreated but still he cooperated with the government. First, or letter A, he was relocated. We'll see this in verses 1 to 3. They altered his environment. This isn't easy. You know, you are removed from your comfort zone. Just try to imagine that. If we are taken away from our homes, if we are taken away from our comfort zones. Letter B, he was re-indoctrinated. They altered his education. Verses 3 to 5 says, They taught him a new language, a new literature. His values were being uh, altered. Letter C, he was renamed and reshaped. He was renamed and reshaped. We'll talk about that later. They also altered his ego. Now, when we talk about ego, this is verse, verses 6 and 7. Ang masama yung egoistic. Yung sarili lang natin yung iniisip. We're focused on ourselves. Pag sinabi natin ego, this is your self-identity. This is who you are. So, so they tried to alter that too. First, by changing his godly name, which means God is my judge, to a pagan name, meaning Bel protect the king. By the way, this is the same with uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They have uh, godly names, but they were changed to pagan sounding names. So all of a sudden, from a God-glorifying name, Daniel's name became connected with a pagan deity. That's the first uh, change. Uh, they, that's the first thing they changed in his, in his uh, identity. Secondly, and this is part of the altering his ego, could have involved his physical makeup. And this is a bit controversial. Because generally in ancient times, though some might argue against this, eunuchs were castrated. 
Pag sinabing eunuchs, they were castrated. The removal of man's testicles or sometimes all of his manly parts to eliminate sexual involvement with the king and his circles. Uh, yung eunuch na nakausap ni Philip in the book of Acts, uh, he shared with him, uh, he was a servant of the queen of Candace. So imagine this, if a man is serving under the queen to eliminate the lustful desire he might have for the queen, then he had to be castrated. So, how did I come up with the idea that Daniel could have been castrated? We will have to go back to a very important background, 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 12 to 19. Uh, this is about Hezekiah uh, welcoming a, an envoy uh, led by the, king of, uh, the son of the king of Babylon. In verse 13, Hezekiah welcomed them and he showed them all his treasure house, the silver, the gold, the spices, the precious oil, his armory, all that was found in his storehouses. There was nothing in his house or in all of his realm that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet came to King Hezekiah. Let me jump to verse 15. He said, What have they seen in your house? And Hezekiah answered, they have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing in my storehouses that I did not show them. Notice what Isaiah said in verse 16. Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and that which your fathers have stored up till this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. Dito pala nagsimula no? yung, yung plano ni Lord na talagang i-exile sila sa Babylon. Verse 18, And some of your own sons who will come from you, whom you will father, shall be taken away, and note, they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. They shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Ibig sabihin, yung lineage niya, probably not directly his sons, pero yung kanyang lineage would be eunuchs in Babylon. E pag tinignan natin yung story sa Babylon, sino ba ang mga Jewish uh, nobles na nagtrabaho sa palas? Well, ang kilala lang natin, si Daniel and his three friends. Now, let's compare this with what the Lord instructed them sa Jeremiah 29, 4-6. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Let's jump to verse 6. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters, multiply there, and do not decrease. So, tignan nyo ito. Si Isaiah... He told King Hezekiah, Your lineage will become eunuchs in the palace of Babylon. While the Lord said through Jeremiah that the Israelites should multiply even while they were in Babylon. And so Daniel and his friends did not have records of having wives or children. So for some scholars, it was very possible that they, as they served in the palace, became eunuchs themselves and were castrated. This could explain why Daniel didn't have a wife and kids when the Jews were actually encouraged by God to do so. No, They should multiply. But again, think about Joseph while he was in Egypt. Although he was working in the palace like Daniel, Pharaoh gave him a wife and he had two sons, si Manasseh at saka si Ephraim. So, Daniel being castrated could be highly probable. Think about that. He was reshaped. Friends, gentlemen, how would you have reacted? How would you respond if that happened to you, if that happened to us? So if that's the case, Daniel cooperated without any protest. Wala tayong nakitang reklamo niya. He, he cooperated with a change of uh, his environment, with a change of his education, with a change of his ego, napaltan yung yung pagka, yung kanyang manhood, no? uh, naapektuhan yung kanyang manhood. But still, Daniel cooperated. I would, I was just trying to uh, really dramatize kung ano yung pwedeng pinagdaanan ni Daniel. 
Could we emulate him? You think immersing on the hardships that w Daniel went through would help us for the next probably three or six years? Three, kung ayaw nyo nung mayor nyo. Six, kung ayaw nyo yung, yung national government. So friends, we should promote cooperation. Number two, if there was one thing Daniel did not want to be changed was his diet. So probably it had a it had a religious repercussion. But he clearly chose his battles. He only protested against the most important one. So dito he he protested courteously. So number 2, we could actually protest courteously. This is when he raised uh, up the issue and he raised it up with all courtesy. Makikita natin to sa Daniel 1, 8 to 16. But Daniel resolved, very, very uh, well known ito sa atin, Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now, God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I am afraid of my lord the king, who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. Daniel then said to the guard whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, uh, over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. So Daniel asked courteously if the diet for him and his pals could be changed. Actually, he asked twice, no? dalawang, dalawang officials, yung ni request niya. So, that's the first uh, protest that we could see Daniel do. The second one, letter B, is when the king asked that all the palace uh, seers and wise men be put to death because no one could interpret his dream about a gigantic image. Sa chapter 2 ito. So, anong ginawa ni Daniel nung ipapapatay na yung mga wise men? Verse 15, he, Daniel, Ask the king's officer, why did the king issue such a harsh decree? Arayok then explained the matter to Daniel. At this, Daniel went into the king and asked for time so that he might interpret the dream for him. So, siya nag-request ng mas marami pang oras dun sa hari para ma-interpret niya yung dream ni King Nebuchadnezzar. Letter C, uh, paano sila nagpakita ng courtesy even when they were protesting? Ito naman yung three friends ni Daniel when they refused to bow down to the king's golden statue and they faced punishment in the fiery furnace. Anong sagot nila? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from, uh, from your majesty's hand. Verse 18, But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of God, uh, the image of gold you have set up. So, marunong po si Daniel at yung kanyang mga kaibigan na mag-protest in a courteous manner. Okay. And we can also do this. Right after the campaign period, a day before the elections, I had a post in Facebook that I said, I will pray and support the new officials, but I will also hold them accountable. We can even join peaceful rallies because that is provided in our con constitution. Let me expound this further. Back in May 2010, I voted for Noynoy Aquino for president. Not because I liked him per se, 
But because in my discernment, it was clear that he was God's uh, anointed to be our next president. Later though, in August of 2013, I joined the Million March peaceful protest in Luneta when concerned citizens felt his governance was going in disarray. So you see, I voted for him, but I held him accountable. There's no contradiction to that. We could protest courteously. Third step on how to live as fine citizens under government we do not like or we do not approve of. We should pray constantly. We should pray constantly. Daniel lived an exemplary, prayerful life. First, or letter A, we will look at the consistency of Daniel's prayer life. I'd look at some verses, I'd like to share some verses that talk about this. Uh, in Daniel 2 verse 18, he urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. So, ayong context nito, when the king was uh, ordering no, that the uh, when the king ordered that the wise men would be put to death, ni request niya yung mga kasama niya, can we pray about this? In Daniel 6 verse 10, this was toward the end of his life. Yung itatapon siya sa lion's den. No? When Daniel, verse 10, now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. So he lived a prayerful life. We will also look at the content of Daniel's prayer. Sa sample natin, uh, pagka nagpipray siya, ano ba yung laman ng prayer niya? Uh, verse, uh, chapter 9 gives us a good picture of the content of Daniel's prayer. I'll cut it. I'll just look at the first ones. I hope you'll have time to actually read the whole prayer. Pero ito yung sabi sa first part. In the first year of Darius, a son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom. Ito na yung nag-take over na yung Persia sa Babylon. Patapos na yung, uh, yung life ni Daniel dito. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. Sabi niya, wow, malapit ng matapos yung exile ng Jerusalem. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with Him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps His covenant of love with those who love Him and keep His commandments. We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your command, commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our ancestors, and to all the people of the land, and so on. Daniel confessed to God in behalf of Israel. Now you might say, well, Pastor, we are law-abiding citizens. No, masunuri naman kami sa batas. But you see, we are part of the whole. So maybe, maybe it's not you individually, but it's the whole Christendom that sinned against God. Or maybe it's the whole country. Then we have to confess to. That's the example Daniel gave us. And as we look at Daniel's prayer life, let's look at the con the context of Daniel's prayer. Because as Daniel prayed, he was well aware of God's sovereignty. Pinag-aralan natin to. These verses will relate with us as we have also seen dun sa prayer niya. Chapter 2, verse 21. So first part. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. So that is within God's sovereignty. Chapter 4, verse 17. The decision is announced by messengers. The holy ones declare the verdict so that the living may know that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone He wishes. All kingdoms on the earth. Though. He sets over them the lowliest of people. So si Daniel, alam niya as he prayed that in all things, 
God is sovereign, including the placing of leaders in our government. So ito yung mga pinag ni Daniel. Safety nila. Supplication for others. Kanilang sins. Submission. Sovereignty of God. Isn't this a comfort to us? Brethren, as we pray to God, we know that He is in charge of placing and removing leaders in our country. Let us have a prayerful life and attitude. Actually, yan din yung sinasabi sa New Testament. So, 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 3, I urge, sabi ni Paul kay Timothy, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior. So friends, to be fine citizens, we pray constantly for ourselves, but we also pray constantly for our government leaders. Number four, this will be the last. What's the fourth step so that we could be fine citizens under flawed governments? Let's influence our leaders to follow God. Uh, and we could do this by preaching to them transformation. We could preach change. In chapter 4, King Nebuchadnezzar had a vision about a giant tree where God warned him that he will make him insane for seven years because of his pride. Again, think about this. He was able to conquer uh, lots of nations at that time. He was the king of kings. He even had the famous hanging garden, yung one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Nasa Babylon yan. So, he could feel really that he was on top of the world. Now, we have seen that Nebuchadnezzar was really a bad king. But he can be transformed if somebody can influence him. So, what did Daniel have to say to him? In verse 27, nung inexplain na ni Daniel na uh, the Lord will punish him for his pride, Therefore, your majesty, sabi niya, be pleased to accept my advice. Renounce your sins by doing what is right and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. It may be that then your prosperity will continue. So ito yung pakiusap ni Daniel. Sadly, at this time, he did not uh, give in to Daniel's advice. So he went crazy for the next seven years. But, after the seven years, look at his testimony. Verse 34. At the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven, and my sanity was restored. Then I praised the Most High. I honored and glorified Him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does as He pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back His hand or say to Him, What have you done? Wala raw tayong uh, karapatang questionin si Lord. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the King of heaven because everything He does is right and all His ways are just. And those who walk in pride, He is able to humble. What a testimony. What a testimony from a previously evil king. Now, the question uh, would probably uh, come up to our heads. No? Did he become a believer? We are not sure. One thing is sure, he praised God in this part of his life. And Daniel had a role in this. Now, as a side note, if a national leader gets crazy for six or seven years, how can its administration survive? How? By having godly and capable people around him. Because typically, pag nangyari yun, no, if a leader becomes insane, no, there will be uprising, the military could stage a coup, or a rebellion might even ensue. But Daniel, for some scholars, no, they propose this being a high-ranking official of the king. So chapter 2, verse 48, Daniel was given a high position. 
He maintained order, itong sabi ng mga scholars, he maintained order in the palace until such time that the king was fully healed. Otherwise, marami nang nagkudita. Marami nang uh, nagrebel no dun sa hari. Marami nang gustong pumalit dun sa kanyang throne. What a behind the scene influencer Daniel was. The Bible is silent of course about this, but you think about what could have happened no bakit parang siya pa rin pagbalik pag, after seven years siya pa rin yung nakabalik and sabi ko nga scholars believe daniel had a hand on it so the question is is it possible that a godly person could influence the president the vice president or ma maybe the senators or congressmen maybe our mayors or barangay captain is it also possible that you and I could be that godly person that could effect change for our leaders? Why not? Why not? So we've seen in our study that when we want to support the government, it can be both ways. We can cooperate and pray for them, and at the same time, we can also object nicely and push for transformation. It's not an either-or thing, actually. And we don't have to become beholden to our leaders as if they can't do anything wrong. Now, uh, I'd like us to have a glimpse in the scriptures and note that others also preach change to their national leaders, to kings. Jeremiah preached change to King Hezekiah. We can see this in Jeremiah 32 verses 1 to 5. Jonah preached change not only to Nineveh but even to its king. And to the point, alam nyo, naging result nun, the king fasted and repented, sinama niya yung buong Ninevites, pati mga hayop, pinagfasting niya. This is in Jonah chapter 3. John the Baptist preached change, not only to the Jews, but also to King Herod, who was at that time living in with his brother's wife. So Luke chapter 3, verses 18 to 22. Yet Jesus, in describing John the Baptist, he said, there's no one greater than John. So Luke 7, verse 28. So some may say, you know, pastor, they can do that because they are prophets. We are not prophets in the New Testament times. No. Kaya lang, ito naman po ang sagot ko. We are prophets in a sense that we preach Christ to others, di ba? Pero we can't be prophets when we preach change to government officials. They should go together. So, why do we pray for them in the first place? No? Uh, why, why do we pray for change? Why do we pray for transformation? Kasi nga, katulad nung binasa natin kanina, sa 1 Timothy, God wants this. I urge you, sabi niya, I urge then first of all that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority. Let's jump to uh, verse 3. For this is good and pleases God our Savior, who what? Who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So for sure, the Lord wants the national leaders to hear of the gospel and be saved and also be transformed. Is it not? So for us to be fine citizens, that should be all, that should be our goal. Let's round up our study today. There are four ways we could be fine citizens under flawed leaders of the land. One is we should promote cooperation. We should promote cooperation. Two, we could protest courteously. Three, we should pray constantly. And then number four is we could preach change. When given the chance, of course, we could preach change to the leaders of the land. The question is, would we be inconvenienced by the new leaders of the land? As we look forward to a new administration, would we experience, you know, uh, persecutions or maltreatment? Could be. But if these aren't on the level of Daniel's experiences, like changes in values or to the extreme, no, being castrated, then let's just try to cooperate. For example, uh, previously, the authorities flip-flop no, on whether motorcycle riders would have to place barriers between them and their passengers. Pa nagpabago-bago yun. 
or even the use of face shields, which medical personnel and almost the rest of the world didn't use no? or didn't approve of. Bakit, uh, bakit ganoon? Bakit uh, may mga pinapagawa sila sa atin na parang uh, wala naman sa hulog, no? Yeah, illogical. Pero kung ganun lang naman kasimple, eh, hindi naman ito life and death situation. Let's just cooperate peacefully. Sabi ko nga kanina, let's choose our battles. So, uh, anong dapat natin gawin? So, how can we do these four things? Number one, let's ask the Holy Spirit's guidance. Let us pray how we could do this under the new administration. And at the same time, jot down possible ways we can apply this. So, paano ba natin i-apply? How can we cooperate? Uh, how can we promote cooperation sa bagong government? We can probably start at home. Pag nag-uusap tayo ng uh, kausap natin, asawa natin, our family, yung mga anak natin, dun pa lang i-promote na natin sa kanila na kailangan natin makikooperate sa ating government. How can we protest courteously? Usually naman, sa Facebook lang tayo naglalabas no, ng ating sama ng loob. And probably we could criticize constructively and nicely uh, patungkol sa ating government. How can we pray constantly? Ay, isa pong ginagawa ko, I, I have a prayer guide. So I just, uh, I wrote there, I, I should be praying for the government from the president down to the HOA officers. So kung nandudoon yun, hindi natin makakalimutan na ipag-pray yung ating government leaders. How can we influence them? Paano tayo magkakaroon ng connection sa mga government leaders natin? No? Well, if God opens up a door, uh, maybe we could uh, uh, take the opportunity. So, you list down. You list down possible ways. Anong gagawin ko para ma-apply ko itong apat na steps on becoming a fine citizen? So, para maging katulad natin si Daniel, no, being a fine citizen under a flawed government. Let's try to do this. Lastly, number four, you could also share what we have studied today to a friend or a family member who would be anxious about the future under the new regime. No, Let's try to encourage someone with these words today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you've given us a new set of leaders in the Philippines. And thank you because you have taught us today of how we could respond or how we could re react to this new government. First and foremost, Father, we pray for their success. We pray for the success of the new administration from the president to the vice president, our senators, our representatives, our governors, our mayors, down to the counselors, because their success would be our success also. Help us, Father, to be Christ followers, to cooperate with the new leaders of our land. Help us to pray for them regularly. We also ask, Lord, for forgiveness if we haven't been good citizens of our country, or even if we have, but as your body, we have not been lights to our nation. Forgive our nation too if we have not placed you above all things. And if we have allowed wickedness to flourish without lifting our fingers. Lord, please stop the spread of lies and bickering in our nation. Please help the Philippines, Lord. Heal our nation and the church from the hate and divisions that have resulted from the recent elections. As we sided with our bets and went against each other. Help us, O oh God, also to call out our leaders nicely if they will violate your instructions. Give us opportunities to present Christ's love and transforming power to them. Help us, O oh God, to be fine citizens of the Philippines so that others could see and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much and God bless you. Good morning. We now come to the part of worship and giving. Let me inspire you by sharing Proverbs 11, 24-25. One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give, and only suffer one. Whoever brings blessings will be enriched, and the one who waters will he himself be watered.
let us pray. O Lord God Almighty, thank you, O God, once more for this opportunity, O God, to give back what you have provided us, more than what we do as or imagine. We thank you, God, for your generosity. We thank you for your understanding. We thank you, God, for your protection, for your healing, and most especially for the forgiveness of our sins, O God. Lord God, please, Lord God, bless our offering and may it be used to reach out others and to enrich others and to help others also who are in need. Lord God, please, Lord God, help us to water, O God, those who are in need of your blessings, O God. Thank you for everything. We pray this in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat, Pastor Daniel, sa inyo pong mensahe ngayong uh, umaga. At uh, we are praying that the Lord will continue to bless you and even Southern Light as we continue to obey the Lord. See you next Sunday! Thank you.